What is good, everybody? Today we are back with brand new WWE action figure news. Man, again, heating up with the news today. Should be fun. We had some new galleries and things posted up. Some more details revealed of some certain figures that are coming out. We're going to discuss it all here today, man. Should be a long one. Should be a good one. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekends, man, out there. Hopefully today we get into some good stuff. We're going to break down all my thoughts, of course, of all these WWE action figure reveals and break it all down. I also wanted to let you know that the Defining Moment set has shipped from Ringside Collectibles. I know some people are posting up reviews. I don't know what it is about... The the timing, man, but every time my shipment always is supposed to arrive on a Sunday, which means what? It doesn't arrive till Monday because the mail doesn't run on Sunday and then so I don't get it till late Monday so my reviews won't be posted until Tuesday, so I do apologize for that, but at least the set is on the way. I cannot wait for it. It should be epic, but let's get into these action figure reveals today, man. Let's start off with Ultimate Edition Series 23, and we are breaking down Ultimate Edition Series 23, Dominic Mysterio here, and I have some possibly hot takes about this. Hot takes. Hot takes going on right here. We have Dominic Mysterio. Now, I don't hate this figure. I think it is cool. You get the entrance jacket with a lot of sculpture. We are getting the interchangeable arm featured on this figure with the stripes or the sort of indentation. It kind of looks like corduroy. I doubt it was corduroy. I bet it was like a leather jacket or something like that. But kind of gives you that corduroy look, right? With the deep valley looking seams on it. It's got the chains and the buckles on it. It does have the Rey Mysterio interchangeable head sculpt or the, you know, the Rey Mysterio mask head sculpt there, which looks pretty good. You have a hood on there. It's got handcuffs. It's a pretty cool figure. I was in person for this matchup at WrestleMania 39 out in LA, and it was a great time. So, a little bit of sentimental value just because I was there, but at the end of the day, I don't know if I really, like, care for this Ultimate Edition that much. I like some of the details going on with the fringe or the sort of tassels on the boots. I like the Mysterio on the back of the kick pads. I like the way these new kick pads and boots look. I like the jacket detail. You got the wings on the back, the Red Mysterio entrance mask, all this different stuff. It is a repeat head sculpt of a previously done head sculpt. I think that's the Elite 105 head sculpt, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong there, but it's just a purple black and white dom which is something we've already seen and then we have kind of this smirking smiling face which i really don't care for all that much and i, I don't know it just looks kind of weird but one thing i do like about this figure is i like the torso this looks to be a brand new torso we're seeing here on dominic it is sort of that undershirt or you know sort of wrestling shirt that we've come to know you know guys like pinta dominic wears we've seen them in the past people wear them it could even work as an entrance vest for maybe a seth rollins style character there are some different things that you could do there but i think that this Dominic Mysterio. It just doesn't move the needle that much for me. It's it's really just because we have so many good Dominic elites and I think those suffice. I don't think you really need an ultimate of Dom. I do like the way the tattoos look. The gear is solid but it looks so much like the other Dom elites that we have. But I do like the entrance gear. I like all that. It's just for me personally if I, you know, was not going to pick up this figure to review and talk about what I really need an Ultimate Edition Dominic Mysterio. I don't know. I don't really know and I don't think that anything is just exceptionally well besides the torso. Everything else is just kind of eh. Even though, I mean, I do like the entrance code. The entrance code is really well done. I don't know. I have, I don't know, I have mixed impressions about it. Maybe if it was a different wrestler, I'd feel differently. I've just never, I like Dominic the character way more than I like him as the wrestler, you know? And I don't know, I just don't, this this figure doesn't move the needle a whole lot for me in terms of everything. But I do, you know, it's a, it's a solid execution. I don't hate it. I just think that, I don't know, I, it's not one that I'm overly excited about, I guess. But the torso is probably the thing I'm most excited for just because it's a new sculpt. It's something new we have going on. I like the tassels on the boots. Some cool details. It's just, I, I don't know. I don't really know how I'm feeling about this one. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Let's move on to his father. We have Rey Mysterio from the exact same matchup, from the exact same event where they took each other on at WrestleMania. And this Rey Mysterio looks damn good. I like all the details going on. I like this torso, the belt, the fringe, everything going on with it. One thing you're going to notice is this man is incapable of coming with Mike holding hands. I don't know what's going on there, but you do get the entrance gear. You get the entrance belt. He's got these moon-like boots going on that look really, really good. That's a new sculpt there on the boots, which I like. This figure looks like it's going to feel phenomenal in hand. You could put this in your Lucha Lowrider. Kind of reminds you of the Flash a little bit. You got bright red, bright yellow going on. One thing about this head sculpt, though, is I remember back at WrestleMania when he came out, I was like, damn, man, this guy looks like Bible Man or something. Look at the head sculpt. This looks like Bible Man. And then so I did a side-by-side, -side, posted this on my Instagram page. Follow me at My Damn Toys over there, but it looks like Bible Man. It has sort of that mat, the, the face of the mask. It's like that. I think this is supposed to be a great Muda inspired mask or in terms of kind of paying homage and I think that it's something about the shape of the cheekbones it kind of has that over exaggerated look and it reminds me of Bible Man so I put up the side by side there I don't know it just reminds me of Bible Man I might have to pick up another one of these and make a Bible Man Rey Mysterio might have to do 
it, man. Might have to do it just for the shishes and gigs. Might have to get into that. But the Rey Mysterio does look good. I do definitely like the Rey Mysterio more than the Dominic Mysterio, but it's a pretty solid addition. We do have Rey Mysterio. And then we have maybe the most controversial figure. Now, there are some different things going on. We have LA Knight here. Now, I have a mixed bag about the LA Knight. Love this torso choice. I think this is a great torso choice for LA Knight. I think that they did a really good job here. The only thing that's holding this formula back, there's two different things. And I'll get into my things that I love about the figure. But the formula looks amazing until you get to the legs. The thighs are just too damn long and they, they're too skinny, man. I think that they need to use the Bobby Roode thighs. Bobby Roode thighs would really help this figure out and make it look a lot more proportional, I think, for the LA Knight. But I love the torso. I love the gear. I like that they actually included chest hair. That's an underrated detail that people miss out on a lot nowadays. And then the head sculpts do not look good. I don't like any of these head sculpts. Out of all three of the head sculpts on this figure, none of them are the basic head sculpt, which is his best head sculpt they've made, which was his first time in the line figure. His basic with the chase, you know, the red and yellow attire basic figure. None of these head sculpts are that head sculpt, and that's the best head sculpt. And it's kind of, it's just crazy how that happens. But the newish head sculpts, the one where he's opening his mouth, he's got the eyebrow raised one, that's from his Elite 108 figure. We also have it coming up in a Greatest Hits figure. And then this new one where he's kind of smiling and looking off to the right, kind of looks like Jeff Jarrett a little bit. I do not like the head sculpt at all. I don't think it looks good at all. I do like the torso, however, and I like the gear. I like the cloth goods. I like the entrance vest, but the best part of this figure, the best part of this figure, outside of the torso for me, has got to be, you should already know it, man, the Air Jordan 11 inspired boots that LA Knight wears. Such a clean aesthetic, man. Looks so damn good. I remember talking about how on his Elite figures, they didn't feature these boots. Now we get it in Ultimate Edition, so we have the Jordan 11 inspired boots, which I always talk about. Some of the best boots in the game. So damn clean. Clean. They look amazing. You even have the LA logos on the back and the LA on the side. And they even have the part that's a part of the tongue, like the little tag across the tongue looks good. Just great stuff. Great stuff going on right here. And I am excited for this LA Knight figure. Even though we do have a very similar elite coming in the Defining Moments line that should be at my door very, very soon. We're going to review that figure. But let's move on, man. We also have a look at the Target exclusive Triple H figure. Now, some of these images are very hazy because I had to screenshot them. So I do apologize for that. But this figure looks very damn good. Everything about this figure I was excited about, it looks so chef's kiss money. I'm definitely grabbing a few of these. Love the torso, the new torso we have here on Triple H. Love the t-shirt. We do have the jogging pants in there. You get the ponytail head sculpt. Lots of different Triple H fix-ups you can make out of this. A lot more lifelike and realistic legs and torso going on for this Triple H. They did a really good job on it. Very excited for the Triple H figure. Probably one of my most anticipated ultimates that we have on the horizon is this Triple H. And I know it's very plain Jane, but it's a gear I've been wanting for a long time. The torso is just it's so good. It reminds me a lot of the AEW Jazzwares figures where they're trying to get those one-of-one -one torsos that look pretty much just like the specific character. So I think they did a really good job here. I mean, damn, dude, these photos are terrible. I do apologize for that, but let's move on. We do have From the Vault Series number three. Now, I think overall, very, very good wave of From the Vault, uh, an outstanding wave of From the Vault. I do have some head scratchers, though, or just some things I want to discuss, but first off, we do have Hollywood Hulk Hogan, which is a repaint of the WrestleMania 39 Elite Hulk Hogan, which was not a bad figure, but it had the wrong torso. It had the wrong skin tone. This looks e exponentially better than the last go-around. It's got the right torso. It's got the right tan. The head sculpt looks good. All the bells and whistles on it. It almost makes that other figure completely useless. And I think that, you know, I know people have used the WrestleMania Elite and they've used the boots and they put it on a revamped, you know, Greatest Hits Ultimate Edition Hulk Hogan, which is just the Ultimate Edition version of this with these boots. And I think that it looks really good. I don't know. I think this is a great business decision by Mattel because people are going to want this, especially people that want to replace those older versions of Hulk Hogan in their collection. Very, very smart decision right here. And it looks good men on card. It's a great looking figure. Great stuff overall with this figure. I know people get sick of the Hulk Hogans, but at least they corrected the wrong and it's more accurate, and I feel like you just had to do so, right? Especially because the rock from this matchup in figure form was perfect. Now they have the Hulk Hogan to match it, so I think that's pretty good. But we also have Straight Edge Society Punk. Really excited for this figure. I'm so excited for fix-ups that we can make with this. It's really what I'm excited for. I know a lot of people, this was a grail for a lot of people. I know it's getting re-released here, but the chest hair, man, including the chest hair, really, I think, sets it off. I have so many fix-ups I want to try and do with this figure, which I'm excited about. Should be fun. The mask looks good. The head sculpt is not the best of all time, but, I mean, it's, it's basically, it's not the exact same expression, really really either, I don't think. It kind of looks a bit off, but I don't hate it. It really doesn't even look like punk, but if you put the mask on there, I don't think you're going to hate it. You have the cloth towel. You have the sling for the arm. You have the elbow pad. I love the camo gear, really. The SES and the camo 
the camo print on the tights looks so good. That's really what I'm most excited for. Just having a CM Punk in that camo gear is what I like. And I think I, I want to say I have three of these coming. I'm not entirely sure. I, I can't remember off the top of the dome. We'll have to check on that. But really excited for SES Punk. Obviously, one of the most highly anticipated figures of the year just because of the lore and the history around the set. But we also have another banger in this set, which is going to be the Defining Moments WrestleMania 25 Shawn Michael with a new head sculpt. Now, we do have the entrance gear. You have the hat. You have the trench coat, which looks so good. This is such a good Shawn Michaels figure, and they didn't update the legs. It is still the pins and the legs. He doesn't have any chest hair or stomach hair, which I... Uh, I can't remember if that's accurate or not, but I'm glad they used this head sculpt. It, it, I know it's essentially a repaint, but at least it's a highly sought after figure. And really, honestly, they probably didn't even need to replace the head sculpt on this. It is that elite or that basic 100 head sculpt right here. I wish they would have at least just added a five o'clock shadow to the figure. Would it really would have added to it? Or I, I always mix up. I can't remember if he actually had the five o'clock shadow or not off the top of my dome. But nonetheless, not a bad head sculpt at least, and something you could replace the head sculpt on if you truly cared that much. You could fix that up easily. Now, nowadays, especially with the removable head technology, but excited for the Shawn Michaels just because it's a, it's a double-jointed arm, WrestleMania 25 Defining Moments re-release. I like the trench coat. I've never had this figure complete from back in the day, so getting it with all the bells and whistles is going to be really nice to have, but then the, the head scratcher in the set is going to be Yokozuna. Now, I think you should know why this is the head scratcher, and if not, I'll kind of dive into it. You guys know that we, this year, we most recently got the Target Exclusive Legends Ultimate Edition Yokozuna, and not only did we get that, we got the, we got a chase figure, man, so we got a, you know, a red version, then we got a white version, or a black ver a black belt and a white belt, and this one is essentially the exact same stuff, except it has white pants and black pants, so you're getting black pants with the red tie and the red robe and everything, and then you're getting the white pants with the red and then the red ankle tape, which, I don't know, man, when you compare this to the Ultimate Edition, it's just four different Yokozunas, four different attires, slightly changed, just, comp I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I don't know why we would get that right here in terms of a repaint. Just kind of a head scratcher for me personally, especially to include him from the vault. Like, did we need him in from the vault out of all the different figures that you could have chose, especially with the Ultimate Edition that just released, and they're not that different? I don't know, it's just a very odd choice for me. Even when I I saw it at San Diego Comic-Con, I think it was. I thought it was an odd choice. And I know we only have four figures in the set. I just thought it was a weird inclusion. You could let me know what you think, but I don't know. That's just four different Yokozunas released within a year of themselves, basically. And they all are very, very similar. And it's just very head scratch. I don't know. You can let me know. Let me know what you guys think of that down in the comment section below. Just a weird decision there, but who the hell am I? Kind of like the LA Knight Ultimate Edition versus the Elite in the Defining Moments wave. What was he needed for in the Defining Moments wave? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. But we move on, man. We have the upcoming Legends wave. Now, this is the wave that's coming after the Kurt Angle wave, I do believe. But we do have Sid here, which looks so good. Rest in peace to Sid. Looks so good. I'm really excited for this figure. And it's basically, I want to say it's an Elite 39 re-release, essentially. It's an updated figure there. But the head sculpt is different. It's got the pissed off Grimacing head sculpt. Comes with the WWF Championship entrance vest. Kind of plain Jane. Probably won't sell like hotcakes or anything just because of the toyeticness of this figure. But I like the tall boots. I like how big he is. Good looking Sid figure excited for this one, even though it may, I feel like we're going to be able to get a good deal on this and you get the championship, which I know a lot of people are going to want, but let's move on to the next. Okay, so this is Legend Series 25. I'm excited for the Sid figure. He's a guy that you really don't realize he hasn't had a lot of elite figures, so getting this here was so much neat. I know a lot of people are going to be really excited for Psycho Sid here. Let's move on to Bret Hart here in the all pink. Very good Bret Hart. I like the sort of fluorescent pink going on. They use the Elite 94 head sculpt, which I like. This is essentially an Elite 94 Bret Hart repaint. For, for the most part, and you're getting another WWF Championship. So, two different figures in this set feature a WWF Championship, which is really good because, I mean, three figures out of this set include a title, which is really good for people who like the championships, but I like the Bret Hart a lot. Now, we're moving on to possibly my favorite figure in the set. It is the Rick Rude, which I don't feel like we get a lot of Rick Rudes nowadays. I know I love the Ultimate Edition, the, you know, the Coliseum Collection Ultimate we talk about I really like. I really, really like this. I love the head sculpt here. I like the chase with the airbrush, the two different airbrush brush of tires. The new big gold world heavyweight title looks absolutely insanity and you're not going to really know how good it looks until you see it in person. The shape of it, the details of it, now to actually have a, a really good WCW version of the big gold looks so damn good in person. You're not going to believe it, man. It's it's really good. I like the United States Championship attire. I like the regular edition. Definitely going to try my hand at getting both of these. Really like the Rick Root a lot. I think this is a great inclusion. Great attire as well. Just excellent overall. Really, really looking forward to the Rick Root 
Ingram figure, especially with that big gold title. Hopefully these hit six dollars because by God, I'm going to be buying every time I say this big gold on clearance. I'm buying it just for the you got to get it. You got to get it, man. Got to definitely take care of that. And then the last figure in the set is going to be Justin Hawk Bradshaw right here, which is really good. Now I do wish he came with a hat. I will say I wish that he did come with a with a hat of some kind, but he does come with a lot of different bells and whistles. I really love these new boots we have going on, which are great. I love the entrance gear. You can put this on a lot of different guys, I think. For some reason, NXT TakeOver the uh, Finn Balor, TakeOver Dallas, Network Spotlight Elite, Finn Balor comes to mind when I look at this entrance duster, but you do have the cowbell, new head sculpt right here, which, I don't know, it's kind of a weird expression. I hate when they do these weird expressions, but I do like the figure overall. I still don't like this torso for Bradshaw. They always use this Bradshaw torso. I can't stand it. It's just way too ripped up or lean for me. I think they should use the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso or some sort of new torso. Hell, even the Kane torso, I think, would work better for Bradshaw. But really good figure overall. Much looking forward to it for the boots, really. I mean, the boots are amazing. These are newly tooled boots, and I'm excited for that as well. So I think this is probably the most underrated figure in the set. He looks really good, men on card too. Just an overall great set. You have Psycho Sid, Bradshaw, Bret Hart, and Rick Rude. A really nice little Legends deal here that I like a lot. I like this set a lot. Let's dive into the next set. We do have Superstars. We have Brett the Hitman Hart. We have Anvil, and we do have Cactus Jack right here, which looks really good. All of these figures look good. I really love the Superstars line. If you guys missed our toy hunt from the other day, we did recently find the Kurt Angle, Tatanka, and Big Boss Man wave, which I probably should have cashed in on. Should have just bought all three of them. Didn't feel like spending the money at the moment, so I did not do so. But, uh, you know, sometimes it'd be like that. But I like all three figures in the set. I love that Cactus Jack is a two-in-one. You you can have the shirt over it for a throwback cactus, and then you can take the shirt off, and you have like kind of a standard, you know, what you think of off the top of the dome when you think of cactus with the wanted, dead, or alive shirt. I love the details on the boots as well. He even has deco on the side that has cactus on it. So they did a good job here, man. I like this great inclusion. I still don't know how we don't have a damn Stone Cold Steve Austin Superstars figure. I, I think that's just ridiculous how that doesn't exist. But I love the cloth goods on Anvil and Bret Hart. Just an overall really good wave here of all these figures that I like a lot. And I think that all of them look really good and stylized. All the head sculpts are good. All the details are good. This is just a fun set overall. And every time I see Bret Hart in any figure form from Mattel, for for some reason, I think of Ozzy Osbourne. It's just what happens, man. It's just what happens. I just think of Ozzy every single time, man. But I think that is all the news. We had the new Ultimates. We had, you know, Dominic Mysterio, Rey Mysterio, LA Knight. We had the Triple H Target Exclusive Legends Ultimate. We have the new From the Vault Series number three. Just a lot of different things going on here that I wanted to get on and discuss. Just a lot of new figures coming that I'm excited about, and I cannot wait to get into it with you and break down all the reviews. I imagine that Ultimate Edition Series 23 has to be arriving very, very soon. The way that, you know, Ultimate Edition Series 22, it's been a minute since we got, you know, those in, so I think that this set right here should be hitting ringside any day now, and I uh, just said that the Defining Moments set hit. You know what? Another couple sets that I'm still waiting on or that we still haven't gotten yet? How about the damn Outsiders Ultimate Edition 2-pack? Where the hell is that set? I feel like we've been waiting on that one forever. We've been waiting on the Fan Takeover Rollins forever. We've been waiting on... Even the Steiner 2-pack, I feel like, has been out for a while in terms of images and stuff. You know, the different details. So I don't know, man. We got really good images of those. And usually after the images, they're pretty much shipping very soon. So hopefully that means that a lot of this stuff will be hitting relatively soon, man. But that is pretty much going to wrap up today's video, man. A huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. Always appreciate all you fellas over there, man. Thank you guys so very much, as always, for all of the support that you guys give me on a daily basis. But I think that's pretty much going to wrap the video. If you guys missed our toy hunt from yesterday, please go check that out. I'd greatly appreciate it. Very good. The most stacked Walmart I've seen in a very long time. So, that was definitely something to behold. But I'm getting the hell out, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have a blessed one. I'll see you guys later. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.